Hey, hey. Welcome to the Trinian Death Stream. It feels like it's been a while been since a while. we've done one of these. Yeah, absolutely, it? absolutely. So guys, this is uh, if you guys are new, if you haven't tuned in a while, uh, we do these Death Streams every two weeks usually. Uh, we did take an extra week off as we were getting ready for this uh, upcoming patch and these things we are prepared for you just to have extra stuff to show you. So we do have a lot of cool things to show today, a lot of cool things to talk about. And as such, we're actually not going to do the devlog recap, which we usually do. <laughs> right. We're instead going to really just talk about what we're working on, which mm -hmm. I think you guys are going to like a lot. So, first of all, um, let's talk about weekend events. So we have a cool new weekend event that's going on in June. This is the Triple Metal Weekend event. So we want, really want your guys' feedback on which event you like better. We just mm -hmm. did the Super Mission Weekend event, mm -hmm. so every weekend in May... If you came, you got uh, daily missions every eight every hours. Eight hours. Yeah. And with this one, you're actually going to get three times the medals that you earn. So this one, I think technically you could earn more medals if you play a lot. Yeah. So I think this one is more for people who want to <laughs> just play Dungeon Thunders 2 for hours for the weekend. <laughs> they would really enjoy this one more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so uh, it's really up to you guys to let us know which kind of weekend event you like best. And we'll have different weekend events going forward. So this is every weekend in June. It's on, I believe it's on now, actually. So after the stream, you guys can go play. Cool. Uh, also, I saw in the comments that someone's like, oh, we want we want a new Abyss Lord costume. So we are doing a giveaway, and it is actually for a new Abyss Lord costume. This is a costume that's going to come out with a Blink King update. So you can see here, it is the Lord of the Depths mm -hmm. costume. It's a cool slasher movie. Yeah. <laughs> the fish is not included in the costume, though. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it should be. That's not cool. So now I can swim underwater. And... So this is a more squid, a more squiddy version, squiddy version of the Abyss movie. Lord, I guess. It's a really Deep cool... Deep Sea Cthulhu. <laughs> Very cool looking version. Wow. Oh man, you guys can see. Ah, moved in real time. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people saw this. This was actually on the loading mm -hmm. screen of uh, yep. the game in the last patch. It was a kind of tease. And people are like, oh, it's Aquanos coming back. Oh, yeah, another awesome costume fish. from Dan Pinkston. Well, he's ready for Aquanos, I guess. He is. When, so when, when that's there, right. and, you know, something special for this Lord yeah, absolutely. and Death Lord costume. So guys, <laughs> if you type in, <laughs> they're like a fish pet. Oh man, <laughs> like a fish pet. So if you type in hashtag uh, Death Lord, into uh, into the chat, you have a chance to win today. We'll be giving away multiple Death Lord costumes, and we're going to talk a little more about it. And actually, Eric's going to play with him on the stream, I believe, right? Let's see here, we can show him really fast. Ooh. Ooh. There you go. Look at those water effects when he moves. Evil. <laughs> evil fish. Really? <laughs> no, cool evil. So the more happy costumes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It really does tie his whole theme together because oh, yeah. the Cthulhu yeah. vibe, a we lot of the stuff feel. that they write is is from, you know, underneath mm -hmm. the water, those kind of things. So I think it fits really well. Kind of See, course. everyone's like, hashtag death for it. <laughs> All right. So uh, also we have our newsletter sign up. So if you guys uh, are watching the streams, you probably already have this, but we do give away free Defender medals mm -hmm. on the newsletter. So please sign up and take a look there. We just sent out a bunch of ones for Series EV. Uh, and for PS4 players, uh, we don't send out free medals for PS4 players yet, but it's something that we're going to be doing in the future as we get both versions in sync and are able to have codes on PS4. Also, Steam only, uh, the Steam group. So if you guys oh, uh, play on Steam and you guys want to win uh, some of these really cool Awakening weapons, we have one more left to earn at 250,000 Steam group members. We're currently at 230,000. Wow, it's pretty We're close. We're really, really close. Really, really close. Yep, and then we'll have to call some more cool weapons. They're great because they're not knowing time, time yeah. to show up for the stream. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, the last weapon will be unlocked soon, and that will be a lot of fun. All right, so with that, let's go into influence. So we actually just had an influence vote close out here. I'm so glad we're doing these again. They're so fun. I know, yeah. they're fun. But who won? Uh, the Mystic apparently won. Right? Yeah. So let's take a look at this next illustration. Close. So why don't you tell everyone about the Mystic? <laughs> tell about your car. Tell about the car telephone call. Uh, <laughs> the car telephone call. I mean, the joke is that uh, I had the mech, what's the name, the Man and Machine completely fleshed out, and then I came up with something for her in like five minutes, and she ended up winning, which was a little uh, astonishing. Her story, or the thing about her is, uh, she used to be this like thief, treasure hunter type person, and she found this strange looking gauntlet, and now it's fused into her, and the gauntlet... Um, has the spirit of an old demigod, which is that giant serpent. So they kind of both exist together. So her entire play, uh, gameplay revolves around you interacting with that serpent and trying to get him or her, we don't know yet, to bend uh, mm -hmm. to your will and build uh, cool things for you. Or he might kind of control you, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome for special effects. I mean, you think of all the stuff you could do with yeah. that mm -hmm. theme. That's totally cool. So do you think they're voting for the serpent or for the mystic? 
Uh, who knows? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Probably a little bit of both. So, yeah, so guys, thanks all of you for participating. I think every influence with vote we've done yeah, has had more cool. votes in it than the last one. So they've been really cool. Uh, and you guys are really affecting the course of the game. So just for the hero lineup now, since you guys have voted on a lot, and so you understand you know, where it is and where it's going. So we're working on the Gun Witch now. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to sneak peek her next dev stream. Mm -hmm. uh, then after that, we're working on the Lava Mancer. So those are the two votes from the last one. Now, normally, we're going to be taking just the top winner from the hero influence votes, and they're going to be next. But we had time to get ahead on a hero, and we were like, mm -hmm. OK, well, let's get ahead on the second hero before we can wrap up the influence votes. So working on Gun Witch on Lava Mancer. Then we're going to spin up the Mystic. And then we're going to, in between that time while working on Gun Witch and Lava Mancer, we're going to do another influence vote where you guys get to pick who's after the Mystic. So we have the Man and Machine and Barbarian. You still haven't been chosen. They might be thrown back in, or you might get three all new heroes. So we'll see. We're going to put like a threshold that you don't even <laughs> get to the final vote if you just get, you know, destroyed the voting process. Yeah. Oh, you can't be president. Everyone will be like, no, we want the Barbarian. <laughs> and and Marco Rubio throw them out. Yeah. <laughs> that is Code Pony. Trendy Entertainment. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, you guys will get a chance to uh, to vote on. Oh man, it's code funny. Yes. Oh, that should be <laughs> Phil, is down down. Phil is lagging a little bit. I am lagging a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, so we do have another influence vote up today, which we're gonna take a look at really quick now. And this is super exciting. This is for the next new map. Cool. So why don't we tell them about these maps? One's really cold, one's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's all done. They're it's actually done. really cool maps. They're very big. They're, of course, the little DD1 maps reimagined. Mm -hmm. And one of them's got this frost theme, one of them's got this molten lava theme, and we've done all kinds of cool stuff with it. The Diaz brothers, once again, bring a masterpiece to the table of level design and clean up the stuff of world building. Super creative. We can do all kinds of neat stuff with these maps. We've mm -hmm. talked about a million ideas, doing a little boss battle on the side, all mm -hmm. kinds of crazy stuff. So. We want the fans to pick which one's the most exciting for them in the middle of the summer. So let them choose it, and then we'll take it from there. Yep, so Frostkeep is a reimagining of Royal Gardens, Royal Gardens yep. from the first game. And Molten Citadel is a reimagining of Magus Quarters. Mm -hmm. So you guys will get to vote on Influence. Uh, Josh will link you guys to the vote. you get to pick which is next. Uh, now keep in mind... What would you vote for, Phil? What would I vote for? The Lich King. Well, I think I have a little bit more information than they do when they vote. Uh, <laughs> but I think I would vote for Molten Citadel mm. first. They're hard, they're hard. It's hard to pick. <laughs> uh, you can yeah. look at the next day. They're both really, really good. So that's a good part. I will say, though, that if we pull it up one more time, the tree, I, I love trees like that, like the tree and frost keep. I think we just need to put a little face on it, like the <laughs> wear trees. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so I think they're both good choices. Uh, really depends on what layout they want. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you want the layout from Magus Quarters mm -hmm. or if you want the Royal Gardens layout. That's one thing they have to remember too is the layouts kind of stay classic to the original yeah. designs. So if you liked a certain layout like another map, it will get a gussing up and theming, but it's going to keep your cool layout from the, the old mm -hmm. days, you know. And I think that we've also made some some small modifications to the, the map. Stuff. So I know yeah. like uh, in the Molten Citadel, there's some areas where you can actually run into the castle that you mm -hmm. saw in that version, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And the incursion, there will be an incursion on either of these maps, whichever mm -hmm. one gets picked. We know the incursion on that map will have you running around those areas, and the incursion yeah, uh, add something to it. Yeah, yeah, on the other map will be something different. So, oh man, this. Computer wants to upgrade to Windows 10 at the most inconvenient time. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's so, yeah, wait. So let that happen. It should only take yeah, like guys, five minutes, we'll, right? We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh, vote on which map you guys want to see next, and we'll be excited to see. All right. So with influence vote done, now PS4 time. PS4. Oh man. What's happening in PS4? What happened on what PS4? What happened? PS4? So this week we released a new update on PS4. This yeah. is the Calling All Heroes and Unholy Catacombs update for all of you PS4 players who are watching, you can kind of get a peek now at some of the stuff that we added into the game. Uh, so the first thing we added is the Abyss Lord, who you can see playing as an Adept Lord costume is not available on PlayStation 4 yet, but it will be available soon. We also added this new map, uh, the Unholy Catacombs. I'm pointing over there like that's where they can see it. I should be pointing, for, should should be be pointing, pointing like, like, like this. Like this. Yeah. So you guys can see uh, the Unholy Catacombs map that we added. There's also a new incursion. Mm -hmm. On this map, mm -hmm. uh, the Spectral Knight Incursion, which should be fun for you guys to play. There's the first Eye Power 750 loot yeah, in yeah. the game as well, so you'll be able to get the Eye Power 750 chest piece on this map, as well as the Eye Power 750 sword for the Squire. Do we have the sword to show them? I do. Oh man! Oh, All right. So this sword is part of our new weapons. We're gonna, we're unfortunately gonna, we're gonna give you a sneak peek at the weapon that's included in the Bling King Incursion uh, later today. Uh, but these weapons, the whole point is they do cool things and they have really cool variability. 
Uh, so you can see with this uh, one, you actually, it's a flamethrower sword. <laughs> that, well, it's a sword well, that gives a flamethrower to your shield. your shield. So when you block, that weird looking yeah. skull appears and starts spitting out spooky fire at mm -hmm. the enemies in front of you. It also has like a taunt aura that's always active. So when you walk near enemies, it'll taunt them. So the idea is you run in, you pull some enemies back with you, then you turn around and you burn them. It like works like a charm, actually. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really fun for yeah. wiping out entire lanes and stuff. It's a really fun weapon, and you guys are going to see uh, at the end of the stream or hear a little bit about the Huntress sure. one, which is going to be equally cool for Huntress players. We also have a whole bunch of new menus in the game. Now, these are really going to help PlayStation players probably more than they did on PC. So you can see that we have... Um, we have this new pause screen here, so you can imagine hitting options on mm -hmm. the uh, on the PlayStation Bring 4 it controller and seeing it, and you can scroll through all these things. You can see there's a new Create Hero screen from here. Uh, you can expect, I'll go along with what Eric's clicking on, you can, <laughs> you can inspect other heroes' decks and see what they're playing with. You can also see what, uh, what equipment they have on their mm -hmm. characters. Uh, additionally, you can create heroes with this new shiny create hero screen. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where you'll be able to uh, purchase the Abyss Sword with Defender Medals, which you guys can earn, or with mm -hmm. Currency, which you guys uh, can purchase or probably already have yeah. if you're on PlayStation 4. Really close. Not quite there yet <laughs> for being SimSync, but that's been the goal. We first talked Everyone's about like, here. saw an iPower 997. They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> Using um, a special account. And then also what's really cool is if you're on the screen on PlayStation, this is how you can hot swap heroes now. So you can hot swap between heroes at any time. Uh, you can press L1 and R1 on the PlayStation 4 controller to hot swap on that menu. So start R1, mm -hmm. or sorry, options R1 option in order mm -hmm. to get a new character. Uh, and then additionally, you can also put as many characters in and out of your deck in the build phase as you guys want. So you can finally build with all the heroes that you have on PlayStation. That's a lot. That wasn't, that was there's a lot still useful. there's still two that more things. <laughs> oh man, do you know that? No. 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 Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> they did kind of see it also just a bit ago. Yeah. So the Guardian of the Storm costume that you guys saw a second ago for the monk here, this is available now on PlayStation 4. And then in addition to that, are a ton of balance updates and mm -hmm. bug fixes. So this time Eric has the hat. Well done, Eric. Oh Yay. man. Yes. Very MK of you. Silent clap. <laughs> Whew. So that's the PlayStation 4 episode. So now new news for PlayStation 4. This came out uh, on Thursday for you guys, so yesterday. Um, we are going to be getting the two versions of the game very, very close. They're actually in a couple patches, only going to be a week mm -hmm. apart. So you're going to see here that we're talking about the Blinking uh, update for mm -hmm. PC, and that will be coming out in the next update for uh, for... PlayStation users, which will be Series EV2 and the Blinking Incursions. So yeah, we'll together. Yeah, so pay attention to what we're talking about now because it's actually going to be the next update for both platforms. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, we're going to have one more combined update, and then we'll be uh, one week after. Yeah, it's not as chopped out. So it's not going to be a parallel course going like this. They're going to kind of start cramming closer and closer together. Yep. So yeah, so it'll be really fun, and I think what's really cool is that all the PC and PS4 players will be able to interact as a community because yeah, you'll yeah. have the same stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you'll be able to all watch Talk the dev stream and be like, oh, this is coming out for me today, and this is coming out for me next, next yeah. Tuesday. And you can talk about how to beat it and those kind of things. So yeah, I think that'll be a lot of fun. Cool. All right, so now the blinking update. Ooh. Let's take a look. Oh man, so Blinking Update is coming out June 7th, so this is part of our push to have more frequent updates to get you guys, uh, you know, more stuff, uh, more fast. Yeah, more, <laughs> more stuff, more stuff, more stuff to play, so having to wait so long to get, just when the big hero comes out, having to wait yeah. like six weeks is a long time. Exactly. Cool so pockets of variation with, is what we're trying with these incursions also, just something different that you play and do. Yep. So, uh, you know, we're going to show you in a little bit, we're going to show you a bit of the incursion, but the question is, what comes with this patch? So, uh, first, the incursion. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we want to tell them a little bit about the incursion? Uh, so, there's this dude. He's, he's a blinking, kind of mercenary, <laughs> kobold ruler thing, and he's come on this map, and he's uh, doing some evil things to the map uh, <laughs> in exchange for, obviously, some bling. So, you have to appease him in a certain way. Well, uh, if, you don't appease him. if you don't appease him, he's going to blow up your core. He's going to blow, blow up the end. Blow yeah. up the end. Which is going to turn all the poor orphans. <laughs> kill the poor little orphans. <laughs> well, uh, killing orphans is an achievement, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, this is coming out. That people are asking now, I want my uh, EV discount. So the EV discount is also coming out with uh, the Blinking Ooh. update. So she'll be 10,000 medals mm -hmm. uh, when this update comes out. Uh, in addition to that, we have a new Huntress weapon. 
uh, which we're going to show you a little you bit later in the stream. In the, yeah, you can see it in pile. the corner there. Yeah, so let's talk about what this weapon does and why it's so cool. Sure. You want to spray's molten gold <laughs> like a flamethrower. It's it's a cool weapon. Very yeah. very cool. It's like this. Uh, gosh, you pull into the wordsmithing depths here about mm -hmm. my back pocket. And it's like a mix between a casino machine, a goblin machine, with a projector and a fire hose in the front of it, and little vials of molten gold, and your right click, instead of being a charge up attack, winds up this continuous stream and you can just spray the whole area and paint everyone <laughs> with molten gold, puts a debuff, does splash damage, does all kinds of stuff. So it should be fun for the hunters to go around and spray the area now instead of having to do single target stuff all the time. And it does some nasty business. So yeah. and the primary attack does sh shots of blurbs of gold and stuff like that too. So we're really trying to make it look totally awesome, so mm -hmm. it's going to be fun. It looks really cool, and functionally, when you shoot a target, either with the left click or the, or the cool spray that he was talking about, the enemies get covered in gold, right? Yep. And they're yeah, burning they're... with uh, multiple <coughs> gold. Nasty dot damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over time, it kind of slows them down, too, because obviously the gold's kind of cooling. And there's some variability. There's a lot That's of That's a big thing we're trying to do now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can talk about that. Yeah, we talked... set it up the other day. Yeah, so. we're, we're still setting it up right now, actually. But... <laughs> it's the only reason why we're not showing it. Yeah, uh, we talked about this a little bit when we did the Squire Shield. We wanted there to be so much variability on like the common angle and the length and things like that, but the system wasn't there. Uh, now we made massive updates to the system thanks to Derek and Yay, Derek. Uh, doing a lot of updates to it. And the way this weapon will work, the angle will be variable, the range will be variable, the damage of the dot will be variable, the initial damage over time as you're spraying things will be variable, the slow will be variable. And there was one more, but I can't remember it. Maybe but the range and distance of the arc. And, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the distance and the angle I already mentioned. But there's the one more. But the idea is there's like six or seven different things about it that can uh, differ. So getting the ultimate one will obviously be, you know, uh, where. And what we wanted to do when you win a map, we we're going to guarantee you get one of these anyway. So it's no yeah, longer chasing the, it for a week yeah, or anything. Yeah. It's no longer the yeah. annoying like 5% or 1% chance mm -hmm. drop that we had before. But now. The, cool, the game comes from getting the right combination that you want. But the, good, the key to that is that that right combination is what your right combination mm -hmm. is. Like you, like someone may like a wide cone and someone may want a projected long distance one. Neither one of them is wrong. They're just a different way of yeah. doing it. Yeah. So you're not like looking for the other. It's not like the other ones suck or they're bad. The other ones are just different. So mm -hmm. you're like trying to find the one. You'll get all these different ones and try them out and be like, I kind of like this one. And that, and then you can search for that one and get that one ultimately. Not too hard. It's not like some crazy grind to get it or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we thought that'd be kind of fun to give you, because you could actually keep a couple different ones and swap them out if you wanted to. And what's really cool about this particular weapon, and hopefully we're going to go back and add it into the Squire's weapon and some other weapons, is that the gameplay variability is more than just the where it hits, but it's also kind of how the slow stacks. So you may be someone... There's some power in there, too. Yeah, you yeah. may be someone who's like, you know, I need a weapon that's going to take down ogres, and you want it to, like, hit the ogre and just get them to, like, a really slow stun, like they're basically frozen, mm -hmm. and they start walking again. Or you might want, but that maybe lasts a short time. Or you might want that instead has a very long-lasting time, so that the slow stacks. Or maybe if you're fighting a large group of enemies, you know you can basically be pouring molten gold on them, and it actually looks like they're slowly turning into gold yeah. and getting slower and slower as the you know different times wear down. So, so like my wife and I you want to run there and just auto spray paint by the entire lane, just leave them to die and go do something yeah. else. <laughs> so yeah, it's really it's to give you a chance to do you know which one works for you. That's the most key to it. Mm -hmm. So. And the gold does look really cool when oh, it's yeah, on the it environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that effect. You gotta show it to me. Very no, Splatoon. I've been on the much stuff, so yeah. I haven't seen that. Definitely a very Splatoon, -y, I will say. Um, and then also, uh, like this incursion, like the other incursions, will have an iPower 750 glove piece. Yay. So once this comes out, you'll be able to uh, farm on the on the Catacombs map the iPower 750 chest piece and the Squire <laughs> weapon. And on this map, the iPower 750 glove as well as the Huntress. We should make sure uh, Brett actually implemented that. Yeah, we talked about it. <laughs> Good. We talked about it. We talked about it yesterday. Good. Right. The, the one last quick thing on that is the uh, the skill levels for it, too. Remember? A lot, there's a lot oh, more yeah. wider number of ways exactly. to play this time. So. And one of the things that we're starting to do with incursions, we're going to talk about a little more in the second half of the stream, which is just about to begin is that um, we're trying to make stuff available to players at any difficulty. So I know all of you are probably on Nightmare 4, but if you're not, <laughs> um, you'll be able to the incursion is going to be available on actually all yeah. difficulty mm -hmm. levels. Yeah, that's really important. So. Yeah, so you'll be able to get the weapon on all difficulty. It won't be as powerful. You're not going to get the iPower 750 version of the weapon no, on the earlier difficulty, but you can get it and use it we'll as you play up. First and move up, so. You will mm -hmm. get the bow, though. bow is guaranteed to drop no matter which incursion you're playing. Yeah. So what are we calling it again? We have this goofy name. The Blingo Midas. The Blingo Midas. Yeah. It doesn't shoot mufflers. <laughs> so we have a question here from a really cool username. 
which is, will there be a hero tryout mode? You know, that would be awesome. I'd love <laughs> to do that. I, they have that in Dota 2. It's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have so many other things yeah. we're trying to do. we got to make the, we're going to revamp the gameplay, change the enemies. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. We got to do that stuff first, mm -hmm. and if we do that and nail the fun factor and the long-term replayability of the game and all that stuff, which is hard to do, and we keep pushing towards this, while we're also trying to give you cool heroes and maps and things to do, mm -hmm. then we can say, okay, the game's totally hot and tight now. Let's go ahead and mm -hmm. start doing some blingy things on the side, you know. Mm -hmm. So we want to do that kind of stuff. It's totally fun, but it would need to come after we've got everything in the game really much better. So. Absolutely. So, and another thing related to making the game better, and another question I'm being asked is, what about monthly? So, one of the things that we're changing with the Bling King update uh, is that monthly missions are no more, mm -hmm. and instead we have something called bonus missions. So, bonus missions are going to be once a week, you're going to get them on Tuesday, and they're going to be just a simple mission that you guys can complete with friends. Everyone will get the same one. So, the first one, and uh, I believe when we're on the, uh, we can show it to you right now, uh, is to defeat the Blinking Incursion mm -hmm. here. So all you have to do is play it once, you can defeat it, and you'll get 600 Defender Medals. So the idea is that players will be getting more Defender Medals per mm -hmm. month now than they were before. Um, players, we're, what we're hoping we'll see is that people are incentivized to play together with other people. You, you come back and everyone sees, oh, we get 600 yeah, Defender Medals. Good. If we play the new map, okay, cool, let's all play the new map together. Um, and then, um, additionally, for our more casual players, which we know we have a lot of, um, you know, the monthly was just intimidating to even read. Yeah. yeah. It was like all these things. Freeze ten thousand enemies, and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, how many like maps is ten thousand? <laughs> four million withering kobold toenails, yeah. or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So now. Now that's gone, it's, you just have to come back once a week and there's something nice and fun to do. So we're kind of thinking about it, uh, you know, and the, where we want to take this in the future is to actually put something fun and different there. So now maybe play this new map, play this new incursion, do these new things every week. In the future it might be like, play this thing in this cool way or this special mm -hmm. thing for it. So just something fun and unique to do every week. Uh, it gives us week. a lot more flexibility too because we're trying to release more stuff frequently. Yeah. And so now, we, instead of waiting wait to the end of the month, or the month doesn't line for the milestone, just forget exactly. all that. Just, just, just let's make this cool thing. Let's put a cool quest on it. Just one of the new maps. Yep. Hey, what cool thing can we do in the map to get people some Defender Medals so they can have fun? Yeah. That's what it's all about. It's not about waiting around and finishing the monthly in the first weekend and doing grinding junk isn't cool. So yeah. we want to make these things much more fun and give you a bigger reward and start building up your Defender Medal pool faster. Yep, exactly. And I think... Um... I think that also, you know, we have some people in the comments who are like, oh, well, you know, the monthly was so easy. Well, one of the problems with the monthly, one of the problems we're trying to solve with the bonus missions is that for a subset of players, you could do it in an hour, mm -hmm. but for the rest of players, it could be impossible yeah. to do, or it could have yeah, taken Yeah, it's, it's more flexible hours. for you to do it the way yeah. you want to do it, so you're not as pigeonholed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these uh, bonus ones are not about kind of challenging you. It's more about kind of encouraging you to play things in a more varied and interesting, fun way. Yeah. Uh, that at least is our goal. Yay. Yep, so it'll be fun to see uh, how this is. We did not say we're wiping PC. I don't know why people keep talking, <laughs> talking about this here. Uh, we're not. So, um, anyways, uh, we're so it's interesting gotta be to see what you guys yeah, <laughs> Always. It'll be interesting to see uh, what you guys think of these new bonus missions. We already have the first couple lined up, and we're going to be looking to improve those and daily missions, which we're going to talk about in a bit uh, as well. All right, time for stream part two. This is the exciting part. We get to tell everyone what we're working on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man, I'm holding the mouse. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're working on a ton of stuff. So first of all, if you guys go to the forums, you'll see that Josh uh, has created a new thread, and it is called our roadmap. And this thread is really just a collection. It's your one-stop resource. Let's say uh, for some reason you guys stop paying attention to us for a couple months, you come back, you're like, what have they just released? What's, mm -hmm. What are they working on? You can go to this thread, um, and then. After every patch, the dev stream after every patch from now on, we're going to really tell you in depth and show you development videos and all these things about, you know, what we're working on. Right. And really just give you an open look, not into what we're, what we're releasing, what's coming out in the next patch, uh, which we, we told you about for this next patch, but just really like what everyone on the studio is working on. So we're going to go over this now. So the first thing is the gun witch. Yeah. Absolutely. So you want to talk a little about who's working on this and what we're doing? Yeah, Brett is doing this character. He <laughs> set it up. I was playing this afternoon, and there's a whole team of guys working on this. Everything from visual effects to animation. John did all the animations last month. She was rigged last month. Right now, he's flying around in a heel <laughs> mode. In a heel mode, you can fly around the room and double jump and everything else. It's really uh, fun. I really, really quickly. Yeah, you move really quickly. You move really, really fast. If you 
this character is, if you're a DPS character, she's about mobility and shutting things down and blowing things up. So she's very simple to play, but she's just a lot of goofy fun. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's all inspired by what the character looked like, you know, yeah. to tell you the truth. So you almost like have a mount, to tell you the truth, which you've heard me say a million times. <laughs> so, but that's how she heals. I like to say so, Elliot loves mounts. I love mounts. I have mount. millions of mounts in every game. <laughs> Tara, wow, everything. I love these things. I'm gonna, we're going to shoot one out here somewhere. Man. We're, we're going to be a motorcycle by the end of the year for sure, right? Mm -hmm. But it, the good thing is that's how she heals herself, and she can pop the thing instantaneously and get away. Yeah. So you can use it to dork around and just move fast, or you can use it to heal yourself really quickly. You don't have to stand there. Because one of the things with some of the other heroes, the mechanic is like, get out of harm's way, kind of find a little spot, do the channel ability, get healed. For her, it's just like, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. So let's actually show that one more time. So right now, uh, the gun witch, Elliot's working on her with Brett. Uh, yeah, Brett's doing all the implementation. I'm helping yeah. with feedback, and we're just trying to get the vibe right. But he's doing all the heavy lifting on this one. Yep, and then the programmers are currently working on their abilities and tap. Yep, or got abilities. Almost, all phase one is done yep. as of earlier today, actually. So we're going to be getting this out for testing to RPG groups soon. So if yep. you guys want to join, you want to test out uh, yep. her and give us some feedback, make sure to contact Danny Moore and join that group. Uh, <laughs> people are like, oh, we love this new map. They always say that. Yeah, so best map ever is called the Breaker of the Doom. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it's, it's like a Doom 1 map, right? It's, that is the map we mostly play on. Yeah. It's a test map that Dan lives in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those special effects and stuff, that's just junk placeholders. I mean, yeah. I will just grab a bunch of whatever special yeah. effects to sort of say, hey, it's healing. I'm going to throw this on here. Mm -hmm. That When we do the real pass with Brian and everything, yeah. it's, she'll, all those effects will be really cool looking. Yep, so VFX so is don't gonna, judge her by that yeah. right now. It's just like work in progress. Yeah. So VFX is going to be starting on Gunwitch soon. Like I said, we're going to mm -hmm. be giving you a first sneak peek at her next uh, dev stream and then a full reveal of the dev stream after. Um, but what are the other artists working on? So that is Lava Mancer. I thought they were playing Hearthstone. Now. <laughs> I'm playing Hearthstone. Robbie's <laughs> playing Hearthstone. All right, I might be playing cool Overwatch. Character. Yeah, so do you want to tell them a little bit about what this image shows them different than sure. what they've seen before? So, so far you've seen the Lava Master kind of on fire and very raging. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing about him, is, or one of the unique mechanics about him, is uh, he's this kind of, if you guys remember Ember Mount from the first game and from uh, DDE mm -hmm. and things like that, uh, he's kind of the torch wearer of Ember Mount. He carries the flame of Ember Mount inside him. And uh, the way he functions, as he's on fire and completely like as you used to see him before, he deals more damage. He runs around faster. He's you know more in range and more powerful. Uh, and we'll talk about potentially in a future stream how you kind of get him on fire. Uh, but you can also kind of drain the fire from him, and he hardens up. His whole skin, his whole flesh hardens up, and he becomes a very tanky. Uh, can take a lot of hits, but potentially can't deal as much damage. Uh, hero, so that's the kind of the tanky version you see, or a concept of his tankier version. Do you know the concept pieces like with all the arm changes and everything? Uh, we do. If you want to drag those around real quick, we can show we can show some of the arm changes and talk about that. There we go. Uh, There's more. Uh, There's more. Surprise. <laughs> There's more than that, dude. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff. Show to He's trying. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> so uh, his hand kind of changes shape, and uh, the reason why it kind of changes shape is. Uh, currently, our melee heroes, uh, and remember, this is all temporary, so it may or may not change. Mm -hmm. uh, but our melee heroes, they have you know heavy attacks, light attacks, uh, medium attacks, based on their weapons. He's the same. So oh, that's the fire bird. Yep. Him. Ooh, that's <laughs> how you get to an AT machine, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the gist of it is, if you find a weapon for him that's like a fast attack weapon, it'll turn into the sword, and the sword will have its own like unique, really quick mm -hmm. attacks. If you find a heavy weapon, it'll be the big mace that you saw all the way at the end. If you find a medium weapon, it'll be his fist gauntlet. So his attack patterns or attack speeds uh, kind of change his what weapon he ends up using. Well, everyone loves it. So yeah, he's cool. Yeah, yeah. He's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh, we're working on him now. So uh, I think he's model now. He's currently in animation. He's in animation or, experimentation yeah. and stuff and stuff like that. And these are being modeled now. So a lot of the artists. You know, the way the studio works is the artists have to work a lot on the hero before the programmers yeah, and the, uh, and the yeah. other people can get it. So the programmers and uh, designers are on Gunwich, and the artists are really on finishing up the Lava Mans right now. Um, and as so, you can see, the, the stuff is awesome. I mean, it's really <laughs> awesome. It always yeah. is. And everyone definitely agrees with that. Uh, so in addition to the Lava Mans, we're also working on the game browser. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're going to show you, we're going to actually reveal this on next week's dev stream if you cool. guys saw in the intro. But let's talk a little bit about what the game browser is. You should pull up the Bryce in front of me. Yeah, you can look at the picture of Bryce. Picture of Bryce <laughs> on my phone, on the camera. Um, Bryce is working on, yeah, Bryce Co Co Pony's on. owner is working on. Co uh, Pony's owner? <laughs> is working on. Basically, the whole the big idea browser. behind it is, I'll try to be brief, I know it's hard sometimes. The uh, is we're going to take the war table and you interact with it, it'll bring up an interface where you can select what map you want to play. 
We're condensing down into campaign and incursions right now, and all this, the skill levels are going to be in a sequence. But the good part is it will list all the games that are going, what titles that people have written in there. So someone can say, I'm farming the Bling King. You know, you say Bling King farming, Nightmare yeah. 4, no noobs, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so everyone can see where the games are, and almost like in a shooter or mm -hmm. Guild Wars 2 or any other thing like that, you can tell where people are, and you can go join their games. Instead of being kind of like, I join on a person, but I don't really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so this situation gives you a chance to kind of advertise what you want to do. Like if someone's streaming and say, hey, come join yeah. me. We're doing this. You can put their name in there. You can sort it and all this kind of stuff. So the whole idea behind that is to give you some a sense of what's happening, like what's going on with the games. In the beginning, the way the game matchmaking is, you weren't really sure what you're getting unless you made a private little team first. So this way, public players can kind of just get a game going and I think it'll work out really, really well. It's cleaning up a lot of cool stuff in the background mm -hmm. and uh, a new UI for it as well. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. And it's like a phase one, phase two, and phase yeah, three. Yeah. Phase one will be real rudimentary, functional, tight, clean, works, and then we'll mm -hmm. add and add and add cool things to yeah. it. So Obviously, if you're playing privately, the browser thing won't really make much sense for you. But for people who play multiplayer or need to look for specific things or specific groups, mm -hmm. uh, that browser will be fantastic for you. And just like Elliot said, we want to kind of expand on it in the future, give you guys more control over it, potentially things like specifying what you're looking for, what sort of map rotations. Mm -hmm. Map That's rotations thing also. In the future. So if you want to, I want this map, this map, this map, this map, yeah. go. And then you just click cycle play, and at the end of each map, it loads yeah. the next one. Uh, I power gates also, you go in. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you say that. Only yeah. I want only people with 750 item power or 250 item power, and you know it'll block people who aren't that. So yeah, that was a key point. We, we debated about that because you know if you play a game like WoW and stuff, they got gear scores and junk like that. We wanted mm -hmm. some people to be able to say, in my game, I kind of want people with this item power level, mm -hmm. but not a global rule for the whole game. So mm -hmm. everyone else can do whatever they want. So we're really looking forward to this, and Bryce has been working really hard on it, and also pitch hidden and helping with a lot of bug fixing and PS4. Yeah. So the guy mm -hmm. doesn't have any energy left. He's probably a <laughs> desiccated husk out there. I'm going to check on him again. I should have kept his pony back. Damn let's, it. Yeah, let's it's going to be a cool improvement to the game. Show them. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, Eric's going to show you guys uh, the Blinking Incursion while we okay. keep talking about what we're working on, so you guys will get to a sneak peek at this uh, before you get to play it next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. All right, so... Oh, okay. All right, so um, now in addition to kind of the hero content that we're working on, we're also working on map content, you guys know, and the last influence vote was for uh, was for the Glitterhelm remake versus the Ramparts remake, and the Glitterhelm remake won. So mm -hmm. I know we just loaded the Blink King version, and we're about to show you guys. Will you guys see this really quick? And then... Uh, <laughs> Get down. <laughs> yep. And then uh, let's show them the Barry Bastion fly through really quick because this is uh, done. Oh, yeah. So this oh, is man. this I love is this really map. what the focus of the next dev stream is going to be. This is the 32 on 32 PVP. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. I want it. Uh, this map is so awesome. It's absolutely beautiful. You yeah. remember it? Three wings. So here's the mm -hmm. cool part. We haven't decided exactly what we're going to do in it. Yeah, so if you guys have any incursion ideas, uh, you know, based yeah, on the first game or that you'd like to see here, please jump on the forums. We're going to be revealing in the next stream, you know, everything about what's in the update that's going to be included with uh, with this map. So this will be this really This is a 4 map in the beginning. <laughs> we went to yeah. a bunch of designer issues for about a week, and Steve was coming up with a bunch of really, really cool ideas. We pulled a few people in the office, and it was one of these problems. It's kind of a weird problem to have. It's like we have <laughs> too many good ideas. You don't have enough time to do all of them. <laughs> so it's going to be cool to see what we do with it ultimately. Yeah, and I think everyone just really loves these bigger maps. So they're all like, yeah, yes, this is awesome. awesome. Cool. All right, so uh, you know we have Steve working on that, our level mm -hmm. designer, mm -hmm. um, as well as the Diaz brothers are actually working on the new new maps, even <laughs> newer than what you guys are voting on uh, right now. So they're pretty far We're ahead. Definitely ahead. We're definitely cranking on mm -hmm. all fronts. And... Uh, uh, let's actually let's play the blinking incursion real quick before we go to the most exciting part, which is going to be the enemies. <laughs> enemy, you ready? Yeah. I don't know. I'm ready. The red brick right. house enemy lab. So let's let's see this incursion for a sec. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. So it's actually kind of similar to one of the DD1 incursions, uh, which had treasure goblins, except now it's golden, uh, golden wither. Those gold crystals, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, dude, come on. So, <laughs> put that kid in God mode, please. <laughs> so what happens and what's really fun on this map is that you have to, uh, you have to bring gold crystals to the Blink King for mm -hmm. him to not destroy the tavern in a certain time limit, or sorry, not the tavern, but the inn, 
And uh, and when you pick up these crystals, you know, his kobolds, they really want the money too. So they immediately <laughs> get taunted towards you and attack you. And this map is pretty much exclusively kobolds and kobolds. Yeah, all all things, things exploding. Yeah. So. There are also all pieces hidden exploding. in the map that are in different <laughs> locations. So... Even though you're trying to find the wither, you know, the golden wither beast and kill them, yeah. to get the drop for them and run it back and deliver it to the guy and appease him before time runs out. And sometimes there's pieces hidden on a little ceiling and up mm -hmm. on a roof somewhere in a gutter, and you can kind of jump up there and get there. <laughs> Some characters can get up there easier than others, as you can tell. And yeah. so, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to win. But it's a race against time. Uh, so it's if you're doing the regular tower defense <laughs> gameplay, and you get this time thing happening at the same time, you're pretty frenetic. If you push the skill level pretty high, you're be like, gosh, I keep losing. I gotta figure out how to do this. So that's a cool challenge. Everyone's like, why don't we have God Core? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweet. So, we sell that for so yeah, so you guys will get to uh, play and experience this next Tuesday, which I think will be a lot of fun for everyone. Yeah. All right, and cool. Now we have the most exciting part of what we're working on. This is kind of so, like we said, everything's in different stages in the mm -hmm. studio. So this is really in the design phase right now. I'm going to kind of turn it over to Haddad to talk about the enemy changes. Sure. So uh, you can kind of see a cool little video in the background. But uh, after working on the heroes, I kind of shifted gears a little bit. And uh, my focus now is a little bit on the gameplay. And the first thing I wanted to do was kind of make an index of all the things we have from like legendary weapons when I was looking at what we can do with passives to our enemies. And you can see this here. I kind of took a room or just added a room to our lovely test map and put all the enemies that we have you know, art for. Uh, and the, the main thing I wanted to do was to give them integrity, and that's a bit of a strange term, but the, <laughs> the idea was if you see a goblin with a shield, that shield means something. Or if you see you know, someone with a giant hammer, that giant hammer means something. So visually looking at enemies, you identify what they do. Uh, and then I kind of took all these enemies and started redesigning them kind of uh, on paper from scratch. So functionality, what they do. You can see in the back there, the dark mages. And I also talk about the dark mages in the dev blog, so I'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, but the gist of it is, uh, for example, the Dark Mage, instead of doing what he currently does in the game, maybe he has a shield around him that functions a little bit like a sentry unit in StarCraft II. Uh, but the difference is any projectile tower cannot pierce this bubble. <clears throat> uh, and obviously, if he touches traps or auras with that bubble, those traps or auras get disabled too. Here you can see uh, some cool variations of goblins that are also put together. Uh, and obviously, you can imagine now if that cool Dark Mage now spawns in a big group of enemies, he's protecting them and has forces you guys to... Uh, do something different. Uh, uh, other ideas we're having is, for example, we take that orc that has a giant hammer, we put him in front of like a different wave of enemies, and the whole the whole point of the orc is to shut down ores and traps. So if he's walking down lane, he sees a trap, he's going to grab a giant hammer, he's going to hit that trap and disable it for like 25 seconds. So he becomes an anti-attrition um, anti-attrition enemy. And the main goal or the main purpose we're giving all these enemies like these unique. Uh, characteristics is to then combine them in fun and interesting and exciting ways. Called? Can, called squads. Yeah, they do. <laughs> hey. So instead of us spawning like 32 goblins, 12 kobolds, and I don't know, an orc, you'll get like the berserker squad or you're, you'll get the uh, orc squad or, you know, very different types of squads. And obviously this kind of opens up the potential substantially uh, in the game because uh, for example, we can hold back squads for higher uh, versions of nightmares. So now the difficulty is not just stat numbers, but also like composition of enemies uh, and thing, things along those lines. It's so more like an army, really. Yeah, it's, it'll be more like you're fighting an army, a very smart like tactical squads versus just a mindless horde that just throws uh, a bunch of bodies at you. Mm -hmm. That's just a bit. That's cool. Yeah, and I think you know some of the the really fun things about the the squad part will be across the different difficulty modes. Mm -hmm. Just how, like you guys won't understand what the enemies do, but when you see them in a certain arrangement, <laughs> the really goal is for you to look at it and just you immediately understand the challenge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like there's guys blocking from the front, there's guys blocking from the back. Mm -hmm. They're all guarded around the side, and now the strategy isn't just well I needed to play this or I need to do this, but it's like. Well, we need to have the squire run in and kill the dark mage, mm -hmm. and then we need these things on this other side or those things. And he's like, oh, but these dark assassins are chasing me. Dark assassins. So, so there's lots of different ways that it's going to play out. So I think this will be, uh, this will be really fun. And I am... Go ahead. We have Go ahead. a we have a lot of kind of different and cool ideas for uh, these enemies. You can see like a bunch of lady orcs or lady orc with two cleavers. Uh, so for example, that lady orc, she'll she's also that berserker type that uh, kind of functions like a cobalt. She walks down the lane normally, but when she finds a target, she's going to rush at it. Uh, except the dual cleaver one, the current plan is that 
when she finds your blockade or defensive structure, it's, she's going to leap into the middle of it mm -hmm. and then start spinning, kind of like a barbarian. Mm -hmm. uh, so she'll go nuts and start spinning on your stuff. Uh, uh, things like that. So just, oh, and like, for example, I want to talk about the javelin throwers. You guys have hated them for such a long time. You're going to hate them even, even <laughs> more now. But uh, <laughs> we're going to do like a minor tweak to the way the javelin throwers were, uh, work. The tier one versions are mindless. They like throw something at a target, then they pick another target, they throw it at it and whatever, mm -hmm. so not much. But the tier three version is like the javelin thrower commander guy. Mm -hmm. So you see him with uh, a group of like 10 javelin throwers and he like picks the target and they all just fire instantly <laughs> at it. So he's like calling the shots from where to hit. So obviously if you kill the leader, them out the, yeah, yeah, then they'll just go back to being like mindless little drones. Uh, so those are like the type of things we're trying to do with the enemies. Obviously all this stuff is just on paper right now and it's a little bit of ways ahead, but hopefully we'll start uh, we're gonna do it. So we're yeah. just in the early phases. That's all. Yeah, I'm making yeah. strides towards it. <laughs> so perfect. All right. So that's enemies. We have a couple more things we're working on. We're gonna go over that are also exciting. Daily mission changes. Oh man, yeah. That's what I was working on yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So this is, this is like a follow up to the bonus missions we talked about. Mm -hmm. If you want to introduce them to this. Uh, so we've had daily missions in for a while, and we weren't really uh, very happy with the way uh, they are. So we kind of took. Uh, a bunch of them to the chopping block, and when I say a bunch of them, I generally mean all of them. <laughs> and we kind One of, daily mission now. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, we kind of rebuilt the idea of daily missions from scratch to be uh, not things that kind of force you to do specific things, but things are just how you go play the game under these circumstances and then just go have fun. So, uh, And the cool thing about it is uh, now they give you exclusively defender medals, yep. and we're potentially looking at giving you even more defender medals. Uh, and the idea is. Uh, that you'll get a mission that says, win three sewer maps. And you know all you need to do is on any difficulty, any whatever that you choose, just go play three, two or three sewer maps. And they're all revolved around play, just like small things that yeah. you can easily do. No more go like kill things with frost or kill things with that and things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I think this is going to be, you know, what's really fun is when uh, the server browser's in the game and the bonus missions are in the game and uh, the daily missions are in the game, you're mm -hmm. going to be able to work with friends and you're going to be like, oh, well, I have... You know, I have to play sewer maps, and they're like, I have to win three games, and we have to do this, and you yeah. can all get together and use the server browser yeah, we'll to host a game, time. jump in together, yeah, get play. Together. Bring the game together more. Yep, and I think one of the fun things with the way these missions are designed, uh, depending on how many we're able to get in and how fast is that, you'll be, there will be fun creative overlap. So if you haven't played in three days and you come back and you have three missions, it might be like, you know, one of them's play sewer maps, one of them's play as the monk, and one of them's like, do an incursion, right. so you're yeah. like, all right, I'll play three incursions on a sewer map as a monk, that's and you can do the all of them. Like, that's three the best time. Yeah, you yeah. were saying that. I mean, that's one of the things that you're yeah. pushing for, even Phil, is like, we got to make sure these things can have some fun overlap. Yeah. But I completely mm -hmm. agree; it's the best way to do it. So you're, it's your goal. You do what you want to do. That's, yeah. Instead of just someone saying, "Please fill out this laundry list of weird <laughs> stuff that you don't care about." So I think it's gonna be a lot more fun for people. So then you're playing a game, having fun, do what you want to do. You yeah. can sneak in other goals, like I'm just gonna level my monk in the back of the deck in the meantime or whatever. So yeah. cool. So we did have a question from Lightning Bro. Uh, if these are coming up with the blinking, so no, everything that we're talking about uh, outside of what we mentioned in the blinking update is just stuff that we're working on that's gonna be in the yeah, future. In the future. Yeah. You guys saw like all the enemies there, but all they do right now is stand still. So <laughs> well, some of them, some of them have do an something. Idol yeah. animation. <laughs> That's true. It's kind of like an asset. It's like all the assets are there. So yeah. we still need to like uh, program build that them. functionality like we want to. Yeah, program them, test them, make sure it's fun, etc. And then figure out the squads, right? Because you know yep. some squads might not really be as fun as we might think and things like that. And that might be good for some. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, take, they'll take time. Hate the That's squad. Why, when we get any play tests going, especially for RPG group and stuff, yeah. jump in on it because we need people's feedback on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very similar process to developing heroes. You know, just regular builds and gathering feedback and tweaking it. Yeah, we're not yeah. going to guess for most people's feedback. So. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, one of the cool things to say about, and it's really fun to see how you guys are reacting to it because a lot of the. Uh, reasons that this enemy revamp and stuff, you know, came about was because we had done previous strategic revamps trying it in different ways, and we got feedback from the RPG group about whether they liked helpful. it or not, and that yeah. really filtered into what we are uh, working on now for the mm -hmm. strategic Yeah, and the, 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 the previous strategic revamp, you know, wasn't wasted time. I mean, the thing that was cool there was that they were working with a rock, paper, scissors formula about different lanes and giving them a style, but they weren't changing what the enemies looked like in their mm -hmm. actual behaviors. They, really, they couldn't. So phase two is like, you know, to do this right, we need to do a lot of different things together. So this is, I'm yeah. really excited about it. It's going to be awesome. And then later, much later, yeah. then the heroes need to get touched too. Exactly. To work with a new formula. So it's yeah. going to be a little revamp the whole game, yeah. really, to the truth. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. But the one other thing that we're currently working on now 
is the XP and difficulty and playlist rebalance if you kind yeah. of want to introduce Yeah, sure. Uh, with, with the game browser, we're re-cleaning up some of the game modes. There's some things that are kind of like jumping all over the place. There's a continuous item power mm -hmm. flow from the beginning to the end, all the way down to Nightmare 4. And that means all the experience levels need to be rebalanced mm -hmm. and be done properly, so everything makes a nice, cool flow and mm -hmm. progression. And you, But we're not changing, we're not putting any gates or anything in. Yeah. So you can still, if you want to have a friend who wants to take you to high level and get better gear, just do it, whatever. But if someone who's kind of playing a game wants to have that normal sense of progression, like I played the campaign, I unlocked it, now I want to go do this, 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 it'll make logical sense where to go. And then you'll be able to find other people who are doing that, mm -hmm. as opposed to just jumping into quick play and not knowing where you're going to end up. Yeah. So all those kinds of things are trying to come together like a piece of music, so it's going to be cool. And I think uh, the fun thing for some DD1 players is that the structure of the game is going to be much more similar to that now, mm -hmm. so yeah. there's going to be different uh, modes, which are going to be campaign and incursion and onslaught, mm -hmm. and then in those modes there's going to be every difficulty yep. available. So you know, if you want to play an incursion map and you've already beaten the map, but you're just on the first or second difficulty mode, you're going to be able to play yeah. the incursion. You don't have to wait. 60 hours until you can play something different than uh, the normal maps. Yeah. So that'll be a lot of fun. And we're going to go back through, as you guys can see, are seeing and adding a lot of incursions into the game. Mm -hmm. That'll mm -hmm. be fun variations to play. And who uh, knows, we may have another, I mean, Onslaught needs love. We need some kind yeah. of infinite repeating greater rift kind of thing. I mean, we're, we'll be able to add them as other tabs. So you'll be able yeah. to go to the grain browser, excuse me, and then pick the type of mode there and just go yeah. down and just see what people are playing. And, you know, you can even just say, I just want to play something in this mode and just go. So mm -hmm. it should work out pretty well. So those are all the things that we're working on a now. <laughs> there's a big. Uh, there's also some stuff that we're working on next. So Elliot mentioned one of them, which is the hero mm -hmm. changes. So that's going to be a necessity after we do mm -hmm. the enemy changes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think you worked on a monk yeah. complete redesign think, already. Yeah, redesign I put together a scratch and made him a god. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. the storm lord. <laughs> the storm. Yeah. 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 Uh, different, different, different things for different heroes. We mm -hmm. talked about this a lot when we started releasing the abyss lord, and you guys saw how powerful the abyss lord was. You guys are now. Kind of seeing the plan. Mm -hmm. We want to make enemies harder. We want to make heroes more impactful and fun to play. And obviously, when we do that, we need to go back to the first four and do something substantial with them, just so that they feel mm -hmm. different and exciting. Yeah. And you know, go up to the level of the Abyss Lord and EV and soon the Gun Witch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, melee and all kinds of oh, yeah. core mechanics of some of the uh, some of the core heroes. Do we, do uh, we? It'll be a great time to go in there and just jam them up, make them totally fun. Do you want to talk about melee, or just do that for... Oh, well, we're going to be making melee changes. Yeah. We're going to be... Just wait uh, till we closer to doing it, and show yeah, it off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so that's going to be fun, too. Those are things that we're going to be working on next. And additionally, one of the things that we're going to be working on next that Haddad mentioned briefly before is putting named legendaries throughout mm -hmm. the whole game. Yeah. So um, be... Kind of looking at... You saw the cool sword. You're going to mm -hmm. see the cool uh, Midas, Lingo... Lingo Midas, right? Yeah. 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 There we go. You call it whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, and the idea is to take all our legendary weapons and to do something really cool and unique around them. And something we, we kind of noticed uh, is that we have, in a full set of gear, you have about 18 passives, which is a little overwhelming. So mm -hmm. we want to take that number and kind of reduce it so that it's a handful of incredibly meaningful ones. And you'll get to see what we mean by incredibly meaningful when you kind of play with the Midas uh, bow. Uh, and kind of go back across our entire game and pick individual weapons and do something really cool for each weapon. Because we have so many cool weapon pieces, but they're not necessarily, there's nothing unique about them mm -hmm. functionally. So we want to be able to do that. You kind of answer that. And another thing is that, you know, when we're thinking about what to do, like, what, what are you going to do for the Huntress? Mm -hmm. You know, add her something, give her an ability. She just give her something that plays differently, a new player action that she has now. And now she'll be able to, like, spray the whole area. She can't do that mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, she's doing a lot of ground target stuff and quick blows and piercing shots and spamming that left mouse button mm -hmm. forever. But now she'll be able to just hose entire areas and all kinds of things like that. So it's the same thing with the Squire, you know. Having to have a button to hit taunt on a cooldown, now you can just have this weapon mm -hmm. and just on full time if that's what you want to do. And then use it to your advantage in a fun way, like a bard kiting in Everbus mm -hmm. 1 or something. So it's like all the, every, as we add these things, we're going to add cool, dramatic, whiz-bang fun, mm -hmm. but they're going to have functionality behind the scenes too. And that's where you're like, the variability will be cool because then you'll find certain variations on the weapons that you like better than someone else. And so mm -hmm. that way it'll be your loot. Yep. Awesome. So now we're going to go over some questions really quick. So all the stuff that we guys are working on, this is just stuff that's going to come out in the future. We, yeah, we yeah. have a lot of questions. Is this going to come out together? How is it going to work? So it's just going to come out in the future. And when we announce the patches, we'll tell you, you know, kind of what's in them, what's going on. So we did already announce a blinking patch. We let you guys know it's in that. That's coming out June 7th. Um, and now time for some questions. All right. So first question. 
I'm loving the new characters, but once they're max, I'm finding I'm back to having nothing to do. What is your plan for the end game? Well, hopefully we kind of hinted at that a little yeah. bit. We, yeah, we could do that some today. New enemies, uh, new potential weapons to go see. Rebalancing yeah. harder. Yeah, an infinite mode that's a lot better than Onslaught. So. When, the, when those enemy squad things get going, that's going to really change how mm -hmm. the game plays. I mean, not it'll still be tower defense, mm -hmm. but it'll be a lot harder probably. It'll, tire, it'll get to a point where we can even dynamically change stuff, and that'll be really good. Yeah. So I have a question here that I'll grab, which is uh, asking if we would eventually make a complete hero pack, uh, oh, similar to what idea. Smite does. Uh, and it might be something it's that we do. Got to be six do. pack, though. To be, you know, <laughs> cool. cool. That'd be funny. But but really, our intention with heroes and the thing you can see us talking about and trying to do is part of the fun of Dungeon Defenders too, or part of the fun that we wanted to have is actually the earning of heroes. Mm -hmm. We don't want. We know that's grindy now, but we're working on fixing that. We want that to be part of the fun is earning heroes for players. So that's something that kind of a complete hero pack edition takes away. And I think that yeah, at least point. right now our preference is like, we really want that to be one of the, you know, you're going to have all these rewards about power and your heroes being more powerful and getting to defeat different challenges. But we also want that loop going of, oh man, there are these new heroes coming up and that are really cool that I can have. We don't want it to be a nasty grind. Yeah. You know, so. So what are our plans for loot changes? Oh man, also we're kind of hitting that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> reducing the number of passives uh, so that they're more more meaningful, more impactful. Mm -hmm. And it's easier for you guys to hunt them, right? You don't need to worry about getting the stars to align on three mm -hmm. passives, just just one. Um, things like that. Obviously, breaking the meta. loot. Yeah, <laughs> breaking the meta. Um, loot is your own, something that we talked about a lot. Many times we will eventually get around to develop, uh, building it with the idea that mm -hmm. when an item or a piece of gear is going to drop in the world, it's going to look at your deck. Uh, look at like an apprentice in your deck, see what item of power he's at, and drop things around that for your apprentice. No more like random things all the time. Um, and those are like two big changes for loot. Kind of dungeon mastering the loot mm -hmm. for you a little yeah. bit more, because a lot of when you have a deck now, you got four characters being leveled at the same time. You know, we kind of want those characters to progress quicker, because there's mm -hmm. going to be more and more heroes. It'll take forever to build them up. So mm -hmm. we haven't gotten to that yet. We're going to. We talked about it. So the next question is one that's related to actually what some people in the comments are asking here, which is, what is the reason for having a Defender Metal Cap? <laughs> what is the reason for having a Defender Metal Cap? It blocks out the sun. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is, uh, I kind of mentioned this a lot with Defender Metals. We're adding Defender Metals, but uh, the economy to back it up is not there yet. We have so many things we kind of want to do with Defender Metals, things like uh, pets. We talked also a lot about pets on multiple streams before. But we want you to be able to buy many different things for Defender Metals. Right now, the only real things that you can buy are the heroes and the skill spheres. Uh, so when we hit that point where we have all the different variety of things, we can be more generous. We'll boost the cap. Yeah, we'll yeah. boost the cap. We'll uh, start giving you more. You can notice that you know the way we're trying to compensate for it in the time being is doing these cool events for you guys mm -hmm. to play and you know revamping the uh, bonus missions and daily missions. But uh, until we have everything we need, we're going to have to just be a little bit more conservative with the... DMs for the time being. As silly as it sounds sometimes, I mean, the goal is to make, is our job to try to make the game more fun for you where you're not mm -hmm. worrying about the cap. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, if you if you just focus on trying to grind to reach a cap to get something and get more and more and more and stop pop for effort, you're not really just enjoying the game, you're just chasing a number. Yeah. So, but when there is a lot more things in the game to buy, then we'll increase it. You mm -hmm. know? So, yeah. Yep, and it's also just a safeguard on our end because we don't know how fast we're going to be releasing the heroes or the different things for it. So, we want to make sure that you know, when we increase the cap or remove it or let you guys, you know, use Defender Metals to increase it in the future that there will be a lot of stuff that like, they're talking about. To yep. All right, so the next question is, have you guys ever considered something on the lines of item preservation, like the inventory item lock from the first game? Uh, not, not really. Uh, if we wanted to do something like that, we need to kind of figure out why we do it, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, DD1 functions a, functioned a little different, especially the inventory, than it did kind of in DD2. Uh, so the way you kind of lock things now, if you wanted to put them in a special bag, uh, change the parameters of that bag so nothing goes into it. Uh, obviously, if you want to sell things, you can select things that you want. You can select an, uh, a bag. You can mark a bag to just take all your junk and just sell everything in that bag. So the interaction points are a little different right now in your uh, inventory. So it doesn't feel like we need to do uh, add a lot. But if you know, the, the need that rises in the future, we can definitely look into that. So the next question is, <laughs> will you ever stop the round robin new hero influence votes and just give straight vote for your favorite out of these three plus oh. heroes influence votes? Um, oh, we, we might do it in a different way. Uh, like you guys can see, this last one wasn't really a, a 
strict round robin since it was based on a total number of votes as opposed to who won each uh, each one. We're going to experiment with some different ways. I think part of the fun that we like to do is we want as many people to participate in a vote for the new hero as possible. So we want to run them over lengths of time as yeah, opposed to oh, simply just doing it in like three days and people being like, what? You guys voted on a new hero? I was away. Yeah, I wouldn't give you the sample. Yep. Uh, so the next question here is, do you have plans to make the game more challenging Absolutely. before the reboot? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what about before the enemies before, come in? Uh, not really. You gotta no, do it the right way. Just if we just turn the numbers up, it, that's not yeah. really the same thing. That won't, it won't feel right. It won't feel mm -hmm. like a new game. It won't feel fun. It won't feel. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just changing the numbers and making it just harder for numbers' sake isn't gonna. You're just gonna reach that cap and again. Mm -hmm. it won't really engage your head. Mm -hmm. You know, you won't be thinking and getting cooler skills and playing smarter. Mm -hmm. So this is one for Dan.